Okay, now we're getting close to having all these pieces ready to, to merge together, like building a car. I've just got to work on some of these last edges, right? And I'm doing that largely with my eraser tool. Starting at 100%, getting rid of the, the hard edges. And then going to lower opacities. To blend them. Again, with zero hardness on the edge. So it's just letting pixels kind of layer on top of each other. And what's great about that. I mean, a 1% opacity is maybe a little too low, but what's great about that is you can really control what, how much of the pixels you see. Then I have the background, and I can play one more time with a direct adjustments. I think I want to darken it a little bit in the midtones, maybe limit the highlights a little bit. Then I want to go to color balance. So levels, color balance, hue saturation. I'm going to warm it up. So I really want that color to be focal point and cool down the shadows. Now I've got to cut it out. Now that red is very different than the green, so I can try my magic wand. I can select the greens kind of everywhere. Hold shift, add to it until it gets all of them. Boom, boom, boom. And then if I'm worried about just hitting delete, because I might lose content in here because I have contiguous turned off, I could always just use my eraser at 100% opacity and just use that selection as a stencil, a mask. So I don't teach you clipping masks in Digital Art 1 in this intro class because it's an indirect way to do what I'm doing right now, which is to select certain things and only affect certain areas. Then I can just clean it up with my eraser. And now, how do I soften this outside? Well, I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned on. Select the empty pixels around. You'll see there's little content there that I can help select. It's this little stray pixel content. Even if it's really low opacity, it's still there. And now what I'm going to do is say select and mask. And I'm going to take that feather down to only about a pixel and a half, right? Just to bite away at some of the smallest edges. So you can see it there. And then I hit delete, delete, delete. And it just kind of bites away at it. So it's a little bit softer. Okay. Now I've got the head. I'm going to put all of that into one folder. I don't think I need these wings. I'm not using them after all. So I'm going to take all these head layers, select them all, put them into a group, call that the head, and then I'm going to move that head group above the body group, and then I'm going to auto-select for group. Whoops. I accidentally put the head group in the body group, so I can separate that out. There we go. And now I can work on attaching it. So what can I do while it's all in one folder? Well, I can do Command-T and play with Distort on just the head. And this can help me match kind of the perspective the spine, get some overlap. I 
right where I need it most. That's also why I designed the head a little bit oversized. Because you can always shrink, but you don't want to have to enlarge when you're matching resolution. The anatomy should all work. So now I need to go in and I need to find those head layers to blend this edge into the body. So there's this one first. I'll go from the back forward. Start at 100% opacity. Get rid of the hard edge. And then go for a lower opacity. Start transitioning between these textures. Feather into feather, fur into scale, whatever it might be. And I go to the next layer. Oh, I have some others I can use here. There we go. And same thing, 100% opacity first. Soft edged eraser. Get rid of the hard edges unless you want them. And then play with the lower opacity. But it depends what's underneath, right? So I don't have a whole lot of overlap here. So I have to be a little bit more gentle in my blending. Next layer, don't need to worry about the eye. Let's go to the other parts of this. Blend in right there. Oh, wrong layer. The little opacities will make a big difference. Little shifts. All right. edge off some of those shadows. And then this mouth. Now I'm going to do a last color balance on this mouth. Try to get it to kind of echo some of the colors that are everywhere else. And then we're going to play with something called clone stamp and dodge and burn to find wherever we have gaps. Okay, so at this point, you can save it. Everything's working kind of anatomically, but the lighting might be a little weird in places. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my sketch, and I'm going to crop closer to the edges of my creature. And it's a good time to always check your resolution. So I was working really large before, 40 by 30 inches. Now, if I check my image size, I'm at 19 by 25 at 350. So it's a huge image, but I've got the resolution for it, so I'm going to keep it there. You know, as long as you can say view at 100% and you're okay with how it looks, then that's a good resolution. Gotta find that layer. It's the one at the back. There we go. Ah, actually, maybe I do want that mess. I'm gonna show that fuzziness. Okay. So now, how can I make the lighting match a little bit better? So I have light hitting the back of the tail, and I like that, which means I also need light hitting the back of the back. And I need light hitting the back of the head, where it is in some way, the back of the neck maybe even the wing. 
So this is what I now do. I'm going to turn off my background, go to my topmost layer or group, hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. By holding down Option, it will put it all, all onto one combined layer and then I'm just gonna turn off the others. So it's all in one place, which allows me to do a lot of things. First of all, it allows me to warp it if I want to, which I don't necessarily recommend because it will soften some of your resolution. But now, finally, what you couldn't do in groups, you can do individually, you know. But I'm gonna undo that. And But what I like best about combining it all is now I can dodge and burn right on top. So I'm gonna do it on a duplicate, duplicate of my combined layer, and I'm gonna call this my dodge and burn layer. We're gonna learn another way to do this on our first proving ground, the next project. But dodge is for highlights. I'm gonna do it with the midtones. I'm gonna make the exposure of less than 20. I'm gonna make it large and soft. And this is where I can add some highlights. And now I can turn that background back on because that gray helps you see the lighting. So I'm going to add light along the back, along the neck, just dodging the midtones, coming at the edges of the wings, kind of the, the light spilling through. You can see the translucence in those wings. And you can see it feels like it's really saturating some of that color too. It just depends how that works. The back of the legs are already pretty bright. Okay, now I can use burn. Burn is going to do the opposite. So same thing, nice and large, but this will be for shadows. So maybe under the chin, a little bit more core shadow there. Definitely on the underside of the tail. And on the snout a little bit. So now there are like little things Let's see. Yeah, so that kind of works. Be the core of the wing here. Maybe do a cast shadow from the wing like that. So now I can see pretty clearly the change in lighting that Dodge and Burn gave. That's why I did it as a duplicate. So that's what I had before. That's what I have with Dodge and Burn. And then I can use opacity to decide how much of that I like. Because I tend to overdo it at full amounts. So maybe just a little bit, maybe about 86%. Okay, now I'm going to make a new layer blank. And I'm going to right click near the eyeball and make it red. And I'm going to call this, all caps, clone stamp. Because this is a new tool. I'm going to save my work. Now the clone stamp layer fills in gaps or it takes care of problems. Like I have this, this piece of straw here uh, stuck in the, the eagle reference and I don't want that. So clone stamp is this great tool. It's underneath the brush. You're going to set it under its tool options to be all layers and you're going to set it to be 0% hardness and maybe about 200 pixels or so at 100% opacity. And then what you're going to do is you're going to steal from an area you want to steal from, pixels from, by holding down Option. And it gives you a little bullseye or crosshairs. Then you click while you're holding down Option. Then you let go of Option, and it will steal pixels from where you were and track them with you. So now if I want to steal from here, hold down Option, now I can fill that in. 